Hi, the main topic of this video are the advanced functions of the Vertex G1000, like autopilot, usage of approaches and managing decents. At the end of the video, we take a short look at dynamic reflections in prepared V4.4. I highly recommend good headphones to enjoy the excellent and sometimes complex sounds in the cockpit. This video shows a very late beta version. Regarding the G1000, we will get into the names that you see here. The already excellent sound of the diesel engines will be even somewhat improved in the release version. In this video, clicking a button takes one second. To explain what that means takes one minute. So sometimes what I talk will not match with what you see. Sometimes I use subtitles as a third information layer. You can go back in the video with your mouse if it was too much. In this flight, we let the Vertex G1000 calculate and fly the cruise descent and the initial approach descent. I delete any old flight plans first. The G1000 could handle this, but you might get confused. I show you later why. I load a flight plan created by Little Navmap now. But it is also very easy and comfortable to create one within the G1000, as I demonstrated in video part 2. It is a simple flight plan. I will add a simple altitude constraint which marks the end of the initial approach and the start of the final. I config the autopilot mode now. Set it into nav mode. Be sure that the CDI shows GPS mode. If not, use the CDI key to toggle between modes. I set the cruise altitude for the climb. I set flight level change mode as be told. This is a typical final approach trim setting. See how GPS and flight level change mode are indicated in green color in the status box between the NAV2 and COM2 fields. I use the standard cruise climb speed according to the POH. The left screen is the primary flight display. Or 
MFD, the right one is the multifunction display MFD. Vertical navigation or VNAV only works for descents, not for climbs, just like the real thing. The DA62 is easy to understand. Of course, after installing, you can hop in and take off. But the key element to take full benefit of the autopilot and other advanced features of the Vertex G1000 is that you have full understanding of all status messages. I explain many of them in this video to help you. The color and even the size of texts shown in PFD and MFD have a meaning. Another good source of information are the manuals of Diamond, Garmin and Vertex. Even autopilot functions you are familiar with might work somewhat different in the DA62, just like the real thing. Engaged autopilot modes are shown in green, armed but not yet engaged modes are shown in white. Here flight level change mode is engaged and altitude selected mode is armed. Altitude selected mode establishes the pre-selected cruise altitude. After that altitude hold mode gets engaged. We enable now the vertical navigation guidance mode. You can adjust flight path angel to your needs. I will use the standard 3 degrees value. Guidance mode means that VNAV is not armed or engaged in the autopilot yet, but flight director and other status fields like the vertical deviation indicator will be in VNAV mode. Top of descent is calculated. get a warning one minute before we pass the top of descent. The target altitude for the first VNF waypoint, that means it has an altitude constraint here 1500 feet is shown in red. Minimums can be defined as a radio altitude or as a barrel altitude.
Now I enable VNAV autopilot mode, VPTH, vertical path mode, is armed as shown in the status box of the AFCS, the automatic flight control system. One minute before top of descent gets passed, we get a warning. Vertical track. I will dial in the new target altitude of 1500 feet now. See how the vertical deviation indicator left of the altitude tape is visible now and also the red vertical speed marker in the vertical speed tape which shows the vertical speed required. The vertical deviation marker gets alive. It is a red arrow in this mode. Vertical path mode is still armed. When the actual path intercepts the calculated path, vertical path mode gets engaged. See how aircraft starts to descend now. There is no further pilot action required here. Of course the pilot might reduce power not to build up too much speed. calculates an altitude of 3800 feet at Whiskey Alpha Tango Tango Zulu waypoint shown in big white letters. It is for information only not applied as a constraint. The 1500 feet altitude constraint is shown in big blue letters that means it is a user input constraint used for vertical navigation. Time to bottom of descent is about 2 minutes and 40 seconds. The vertical speed at target field here about 720 feet per minute indicates the required speed at the end of the VNAV profile. All values are permanently updated as long as actual speed changes. One minute before we pass the bottom of descent, we get a warning. I set flaps and extend the gear to establish a stabilized approach before reaching 1500 feet 
altitude and disengaging autopilot then. Engaging autopilot now. Eighty four knots is the recommended minimum final approach speed for full flaps. But in the intro of this video, I demonstrated. The minimum control speed which is 70 knots. <laughs> 